Thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, after this introduction, we want to explain why testing is so important, especially early testing. We want to show you how this can be reached with our mini hill system. Uh, and we will do a uh, short practical demo, which uh, shows how easy it is uh, to use mini hill uh, for testing and system testing and uh, that's all. So we start with an introduction uh, of uh, the company Protos. Yeah, hello, my name is uh, Thomas Schütz from Protos and uh, we build modeling tool chains uh, uh, for embedded systems. So we do modeling tools, domain specific languages, code generators, formal verification, uh, we have test tools and test case generators, and uh, we do test systems and tools for microcontroller applications. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about now, about the mini hill. So basically, we do everything that makes embedded development faster and more re reliable. And Hitex is an uh, expert of embedded developments. We can start with your projects with uh, uh, consulting and training. We are selling development tools and software components. Uh, we can help you with development services and testing services. And finally, we can help you also with uh, prototype production and serious production. So for testing, the competencies of Protox, Protos and Hitex fit completely together. This is the reason why we are inviting today you for this webinar for hill testing and we can deliver to you hill test tools and hill test services. Why is testing so important when you have a uh, software or embedded development project uh, for functional safety? So most functional safety standards are demanding a development process like the V model and on the right side of the V model testing and validation is uh, demanded. Also when you have an only in QM project testing is and validation is strictly recommended. So for the lower parts the module testing normally unit testing is demanded and used. For this we have the uh, test tool TESI. But for the higher layers of testing and validation, the integration testing, the uh, testing of subsystems and uh, the system test, uh, you need hill features. For these hill features, um, our system is well suited. Here is a slide which shows you uh, why it's important to test early during the development. Uh, here are the costs of a fix of a bug is mentioned. When you, uh, the most uh, expensive bug fix is after the release, when you have uh, to have a recall of your products. But also for system test, integration test, a bug fix is very complex and expensive. And when you find all these bugs during the implementation, the costs are the, uh, the best. Um, here you see in slide about the testing gap. When you start with a, a development process on the left side, you have an evaluation board, you are developing drivers, you are developing the hardware related components and after this software components. And the above layer is the application. This application then runs on the your final ECU. And on the next slide, you see what you can do with unit tests. You are normally uh, testing the software components. 
if you are very good also the hardware related and the drivers are tested with this unit test and uh, your final hill test is done on when your hardware when your complete ECU is available with our mini hill system you can test earlier with the Protoss mini hill system you can test on the evaluation board without the existing final hardware starting with the drivers the hardware related software components and the, uh, and the application so uh, you see here an early test an early hill test is feasible and uh, you can find the bugs very fast in the past there were a lot of problems hill tests are available but not, probably not uh, with a prototype version of your hardware and evaluation board or anything else. These tools normally relate to the final ECU. Um, the tool costs are very high uh, and uh, often the simulation of complex or dangerous hardware like high voltage motors or something else are not uh, uh, feasible with these expensive tools. So we have we had to find something else, and uh, the next slide shows the list of items which with which such a tool has to fulfill. Uh, of course, Hill needs means in real time and real time hardware stimulation and measuring, uh, but not only of uh, uh, simple interfaces like uh, inputs outputs or analog inputs outputs. Also, UART, SPI, I2C, CAN, LIN, and such uh, complex interfaces have to be uh, supported. Normally, such interfaces like CAN, LIN, TCP, IP, and so have also complex protocols, which have, which have to be simula simulated by these tools. When you don't have the motor or uh, complex real-time hardware like sensors, batteries, or components, like RAM, Flash, or other SPI partners, for instance, these have to be simulated by the tools. Uh, for HAL tests, MCAL tests, also hardware interfaces, hardware sim stimulation and measurement of hardware has to be, uh, is needed. And uh, the next uh, steps are, which are the list of steps which have to, have to be fulfilled by the tools, the de definition of test cases, of course, the test cases have to be executed automatically. The test test results have to be uh, protocoled, and also for an early um, testing, continuous integration should be possible. And of course, the price, prices have to be in a range that uh, every developer can have such a tool. And now I pass to Thomas Schütz from Protos. He will explain the solution with Minihill. Yeah, thank you, Kurt. Um, yeah, the what do we do? What's the solution? On the left side, you see our Minihill board. Um, the Minihill board consists of uh, of a Hill processor. It's a Cortex M7. It's a very fast embedded processor where the simulation environment and test environment runs. Uh, on the right side, you see the connectors for the system under test. In this case, for example, uh, with an Oryx processor or for an TLE processor by Infineon, we also have adapters for other microcontrollers, ARM microcontrollers, for example, the XMC microcontroller of, of Infineon and others. And in the middle, you see the patch panel um, where you can connect the system under test with the test system. Um, for example, you connect all the UART, all the PWMs, all the signals, digital inputs, outputs, I square C, and so on, uh, between the system under test and the and the test system. On the right side, you see uh, various uh, um, modeling uh, diagrams. We use uh, we rely very strong on model-based approach, so we uh, model the structure and the behavior of the simulation, environment simulation, and of the test cases, and we generate then running test cases from it. 
Um, and of course, we generate uh, various reports um, for monitoring uh, yeah, the, the quality of your project. Uh, the development process uh, um, of, for, for such test cases is uh, the following. You develop simulation, environment simulation and test models. So everything model-based. Then we generate everything in C code. We compile it, we flash it to the test system on the left side. Um, so it's, uh, uh, it's capable of run, uh, running in hard real time. That's very important for many embedded systems. Then we execute the simulation and tests on the mini hill processor. Um, we lock the, the, the results and generate uh, in the third step uh, test reports and traces. So test reports for to have statistics about the test execution and the traces to analyze in depth what really happened, how to find a bug and things like that. And then you uh, start the iteration and learn and iterate uh, either change your system under test and rerun the test cases or you change your test tests and add more tests and run them. Um, so that's the basic development process. Um, I have prepared a little a demonstration for you, um, live demonstration. I'll explain this demonstration on this block diagram. So the set setup is on the right side, we have uh, the system under test. In this case, an uh, Infineon TLE controller, motor uh, control, a microcontroller. Uh, you can also plug in an Oryx or an XMC or other microcontrollers. Um, and on the left side, we have the test system. This, again, this Cortex M7 processor where our simulation environment uh, runs. And for this demo, we use uh, a motor controller application uh, on the right side. So the system under test uh, accepts uh, um, RPM, direction, brake commands, and so on uh, via UART. So we control the system on the test via UART, and, and then uh, the motor control uh, controls a BLDC motor by generating PWMs and measuring the resulting hall signals from the motor. Um, on the left side, uh, on our system, uh, on our test system, we uh, have implemented the send receive commands uh, with the system under test via UART. Uh, we measure the three PWMs. We run a motor simulation. This can be run in C code or as, a, as state machines, or we can also integrate MATLAB simulink models um, to run motor simulations. It's a closed loop simulation in this case. And then we generate holes, the resulting hole signals for the, for the, uh, um, for the frequency with the right frequency. Uh, so that the motor control application can do its uh, control. And uh, in the end, on top of that, we run the test cases where we try to uh, prove certain functionalities or break the, the system, uh, uh, try to break the system to find out about bugs and uh, problems. Um, so that's a basic setup. Now I'm going to uh, switch to the, to the live demo. I have prepared, uh, first of all, a little camera here that's uh, that's the test system in real life on the left side you see the processor with the hill processor on the right side that's the adapter for a TLE controller that's the TLE controller uh, where the motor control runs we have also a plug-in for for Oryx uh, and uh, here in the middle you see the patch panel for example we have here three PWMs oh, let me fix this I broke the system you see it's all live here. Um, yep. Yeah. And uh, so, for example, they have three PWMs uh, uh, that are generated and measured on this side. And we produce three hall signals, which are, which are generated by the simulation and, and transferred on this side. And those two uh, uh, lines of, of connectors are connected with the TLE processor here on this side. Um, you can flash the system under test over this debugger cable. You can flash the, the test system over this debug cable. And then here, that's the, that's the UART cable uh, or uh, virtual UART for the test control and for the logging uh, for your test system. So that's the hardware setup. Now, I, now let's have a closer look at the signals and at the test cases we're running. 
I'm going to show you a little logic analyzer log. Um, here again, you see the three channels, the three PWM uh, uh, high side signals. Here the whole sig signals that are generated by the simulation and here the two channels for UART, RX and TX. And the complete test case uh, looks something like that. That's a very uh, simple test case. Um, not to make it too complicated, here for example, you can see UART commands sent from the test system and replied by the system on the test. We set, for example, the RPM uh, uh, of the frequency of the motor. And here you see the motor control starts to produce PWMs, block commutated PWMs. And the test system generates the responding hall signals. Uh, so the motor actually runs against the simulation, not against the real motor. Uh, motor. Um, so that's the, that's the test case we want to run here. You can also see that we change the frequency during the test case. For example, over UART, we give another uh, frequency uh, for the for the motor, and here you see that the whole signals adapts and the PWM goes, for example, to 90%. So that that's the test case I want to run, and I want to try to uh, break the system to show you what happens then. Um, now let's move one level up from the electrical signals to our uh, modeling environment. In the modeling environment, um, I'm going to start with the, um, with the structural view. In the structural view, you can define all the signals you need on the hardware and com connect them with your test system. I go inside this uh, demo um, now. Here you can see everything we need to run this uh, demo. We have a manual test I'm not going to show you uh, today, and that's the automated test. And in order to run the automated test, we need uh, a couple of uh, adapters. First of all, we need the UART adapter to uh, send and receive the commands to the system under test, where we actually control the system under test. And then the the uh, test system measures the, the PWMs, feeds them into the motor simulation, and the motor simulation uh, uh, produces a speed, and the whole generator here generates three digital outputs to emulate the, uh, the whole signals. Um, and um, yeah, that's the, that's the motor simulation. Those are the things we need, uh, hardware adapters and hardware simulation, we need to run the test case. Um, if you want to uh, create your own simulations, you can. Uh, you have to define not only the structure, but also behavior. In this case, uh, that's the top level behavior of the motor simulation designed as a state machine, as a finite state machine. Uh, that's deeply integrated that deeply integrates uh, with the model. For example, if I can uh, send uh, start stop to the PWM measurement actor on model level, so I can design the complete uh, uh, um, uh, event-driven behavior for this simulation with a state machine. Uh, on, on this level, you also can integrate generated MATLAB simulating code. For example, if you already have a plant simulation, you can integrate integrate this into our test system. And uh, let's move one level up. Uh, one level up, we now have the test cases. So I showed you the, the simulation environment, and now I'm going to show you the test cases. In order to, to describe test cases, we implemented another uh, language that also integrates directly with the test system. I'm going inside this component now. Here you see all the interfaces the test case has. Here you have a motor running UART, uh, uh, the motor simulator, and so on. And um, inside this structural view, we have another behavior, behavioral view, and that's the test language we implemented for, uh, for this system. With this test language, you can define uh, test suites, and uh, the test suites call the test sequences, and from test sequences, you can call test steps. So those are the three levels you, you have. 
Um, and let's start with a test step, for example, with the set duty. A test step is an atomic um, yeah, test uh, step that can be reused, of course. Uh, reused, of course. Um, a test step always consists of actions and reactions. For example, in this case, I set over the UART uh, a duty cycle. So now a duty cycle uh, command is sent over the UART wire to the system under test. And as, an, as a reaction, I expect that the UART send uh, done comes first, and then that I actually get the UART uh, command back from the system under test, and I evaluate whether it really has the same duty cycle uh, I, I, I uh, send as a command. Um, as you can see, uh, you can directly access the structural elements from the test cases. For example, I can set uh, break uh, true, I generate the code and the test case runs again. So it's a completely model-driven approach. Um, to understand the test cases better, um, it's uh, we generate various diagrams. For example, here below you can see a call graph for, for the complete test suites. For example, the motor demo component test uh, calls uh, the duty cycle, UART control, direction and brake control test and they call those test steps. Uh, if I click something, uh, I navigate to the, to the right position. And here on the right, you can see the generated sequence diagram. Um, so for example, if I have this test uh, step set duty cycle, you can see the same test step as a graph. That's a very good uh, way to specify test cases and to document what, what you actually want and to discuss it in your team. And if you go one step up in a sequence, uh, the test case gets longer here. And you can see all the sub steps and go up, uh, for example, to the, uh, to the test suite. And if you click on the test suite, you see actually the complete test suite uh, that will be executed. And that's the specification. Um, so if you have developed the, the test cases and defined exactly in which order which uh, functionality uh, has to be executed and how you uh, um, how you ex or which which is the expected behavior on your target, um, you can generate uh, the, the code, compile it, flash it to the target, and run the test case. Huh? So to run the test case, uh, you can do it, uh, for example, from our graphical user interface. Um, that's a graphical user interface application um, where uh, where you can connect to the uh, Mini Hill hardware. I'm going to connect now over the, the UART uh, um, or over the virtual UART port. And you can see I'm connected with the running hardware. I'm going to show you uh, the camera again. So that's now the, the test system. Here the LED is blinking and here you see the green LED is blinking as well on, the, on our graphical user interface. Yeah, and now, I, now I'm connected and it can run the test cases. I run the test cases. And here you can see all the component tests um, um, have, have been run correctly and also the motor integration tests. And uh, to show you that it's uh, um, what happens when a test case fails, I will not change the system under test now, um, um, but I'm going to sabotage, make a sabotage here. I'm going to pull a wire on the, on the uh, wiring here. So I'm taking take away one cable for the PWM, so the system under test should fail. Now I'm going to run the test case again, and, oh, let me, sorry, I didn't execute it again, we run, yeah, now it's, sorry, uh, and now I can see that the motor control speed test failed, it needs to fail because I took away a PWM signal, and now I take away, for example, a, a, a UART signal. Let's take away a UART signal and rerun the tests, and I see exactly that the, the, the UART commands all fail. So it already fails on component level, uh, test level, uh, because I took away the, the UART channel. 
So now if I want to see exactly where it failed, uh, that's not uh, enough information. I can get some more information on text console. Uh, that's, that's the real test uh, run, but uh, that's also not sufficient. So that's why we also generate uh, target logs and transform them to graphical views. For example, I'm going to show you this with the motor component tests. That's the actual test run um, I ran. And if you click on the, on, for example, in this case, on, on this failed test case, the, The editor, the, the model editor, opens uh, uh, the model exact at the position where the actual test case failed. So if I click on another test case, for example, here on the step activate motor control, it it goes directly to this uh, to the sequence where it failed. Um, and here you see again on the right side the expected behavior. So, uh, but you don't really need to compare it because already you have the right documentation here where it failed. And then you can fix your test case again and uh, or you can fix your system under test and uh, rerun the test cases and then you get uh, the right, right behavior again. I'm going to run the same thing now on command line because you, that's, that's how you develop your test cases and how you analyze if something fails. So that's more for the test developer, maybe also for the, for the developer of the system under test when he, uh, when he executes the test cases to find out whether, for example, for regression tests on the desktop, uh, that's a very good use case. But you also want to run maybe in a, uh, at a certain stage in your project, you want to run your test system on a continuous integration server. And that's where we have a command line interface. Um, for example, you can connect this uh, uh, test system over those cables here. So over this cable and over this and this cable to your continuous integration server. And our tools are completely uh, uh, headless. Uh, they also run completely headless. So I'm going to run the same test cases as before and uh, create a some more reports. I'm running the test cases now on command line. As you can see in this shell, the uh, system connects and it fails. Why does it fail? Because I did not disconnect the GUI, the graphical user interface. So I rerun the test case on command line. And now you can see that the test cases are executed on the target. And we also execute the combinatorial test cases uh, on the target. Uh, and now, uh, well, let me let me check this here again. Sorry, I did did not reconnect this. Let's call again. Yeah. So now now it runs all the test cases, uh, and. It generates everything I showed you before also as uh, reports plus some additional reports. So now I can have a look at the generated uh, uh, reports uh, like the, all the traces uh, we had a look at before. So they have in this case been generated by the command line uh, execution. We also uh, get all the test results as uh, X unit test results. That's very important for the integration with continuous integration systems. As you can see, you can use the J unit viewer. That's a standard format. And we also generate a feature report. Um, the feature report uh, gives you a traceability between your requirements and the actual uh, test cases that have, have been uh, running. Uh, for example, in this case, we get 100% uh, feature coverage and 100% coverage of our, our um, positive uh, uh, passes here of our test cases. If I have a look at the feature integration test setup, um, I, I see which test cases belong there, or the robustness test runs the combinatorial test cases. And if I pull some uh, plug again, like this one here, and I rerun the test cases. 
I get a test report with all the errors. Uh, and that's a very important view because that's uh, mandatory for many, uh, for many safety critical projects. And it's also very useful for non-safety critical projects to have a coverage for your features or for your requirements to know exactly uh, yeah, where are some test cases failing or missing and so on. That's something you can display very good in a continuous integration uh, server as a report um, on your screen. Um, so now I, the test case has been run and now you can see again which test cases failed. For example, all the robustness test cases failed because no communication is possible to the target. But you can already see that the UR commands fail, so you do not have to bother with the, the, the integration tests. You, uh, first you fix your UART uh, uh, commands here. So that's the, that's the feature reporting. Um, in the end, um, what you get is uh, an automated test environment uh, where you get can run uh, integration tests and uh, component tests up to uh, system level tests. If you want to uh, make more heavy testing, uh, you can um, use our test uh, cases also to run combinatorial tests. So for example, you take the test sequences and the test steps and you define a so-called state transition test. That's a, uh, that's a method uh, um, widely used for, uh, for heavy testing, for safety critical systems, for example. Um, and in this test, case, in this test uh, method, you define a, a test run or a set of test cases as a state transition graph. And every path from initial to end is a test case. And then we generate, for example, uh, test cases, enough test cases to cover all transitions or combinations of transitions. I don't go into detail now, but as you can see here on the, uh, on the graphic user interface, I connect again and I run the test cases. And now I, yeah, it fails again, of course. And those uh, test cases down here, those are the tr state transition tests. State transition tests are a very good way to uh, to find out about very very rare errors, sporadic errors, uh, errors that are really hard to detect, such as race conditions. Um, those are the errors uh, that usually show up in the field and are really hard to reproduce. Many of those errors you can find with uh, combinatorial test cases here. Okay, so that's uh, so much for the uh, demonstration. I go back to the slides and um, make a little conclusion. So the mini hill enables early tests for embedded systems. You can uh, test microcontroller systems. Um, you can uh, uh, test your driver development, hardware abstraction layer, or also AutoSAR MCAL tests, microcontroller abstraction layer tests. Uh, that's a use case uh, we have. Then uh, component tests for motor control, battery control, protocol stacks, and other elements. Um, and uh, then you can integrate test your drivers and components and application on the target CPU with the real I.O. signals. So all signal level uh, testing. And um, you can basically make complete microcontrol application tests uh, um, without additional hardware on the desktop of the developer or on the continuous integration server. Uh, the features we have is model-based development for environment simulations and test cases. We have uh, code generators for simulation and test cases. It's all hard real-time. As you have seen, uh, we support a big variety of microcontrollers. If we don't have an adapter for your microcontroller, ask us and we produce uh, together with Hitex. Uh, uh, adapters for those microcontrollers. That's the that's a regular use case, and uh, you can in the end you can automate your test execution on desktop and on continuous integration. So basically, you can test your microcontroller applications very early and automate it. Thank you, uh, and I'm giving back to uh, Kurt Böhringer. 
So Thomas, thank you for your <coughs> really good uh, and practical demonstration of the system. Um, so all attendees have the uh, possibility to put questions to us. Um, these questions will be answered after this uh, session here. Uh, you will get a feedback email. Uh, you will get an, an, an email uh, where you can find the answers for these questions within the next one or two weeks. Uh, so you will find here our email addresses from Thomas Schütz and my email address if you have questions, if you have uh, want to have quotes or anything else. Uh, so thank you again for uh, attending and uh, goodbye.